Hi guys, it's Heather Darnall. Welcome to my art channel. Well, I feel so much better compared to the last video that I uploaded where I also feel like I looked like a complete train wreck, but whatever. We all have our bad days and you saw mine, so whatever, not hiding anything. Um, but also, I just wanted to let you know that today, my goodness gracious, I am so blessed because my son is still in school. So if you've noticed, it's very quiet in my house right now and it's not going to be for much longer because if you're a parent too, you know your kids are getting out of school next week and so you're like, ah, I need to do whatever I want to do now. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to paint, darn it. <laughs> and it's also my 29th birthday for the 14th time. So you better believe I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to have some me and you time. But today's painting, I want to give a knowledge to a person called uh, Terry Art and Moore. At least that's the name of the or the shop owner that I saw on Etsy that had this painting that I came across, which is a beautiful and simple patriotic sky. And since we have Memorial Day around the corner and Independence Day as well, you better believe I want to do something patriotic. I love our country and we are a very blessed nation. And so I thought it'd be super appropriate to paint something to recognize our nation. But anyways, before we get started, today's ministry snack comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33. And it reads, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Well, these things that Jesus speaks of are his word, which is truth, and his word brings comfort and peace. So that is super essential that we all dive into his word. And I don't know about you, but I know I can afford to dive into his word a little bit more often than I do now. Um, even as for as busy as we are, Jesus really, really loves when we take the time, even if it's just a few minutes, to stop and praise and thank him for all that he's done for us and just to get to know him a little bit better through reading his word, which again brings us peace. But he's also talking about tribulations here and my gosh, you guys, I have had so many tribulations and trials. I, wow, I... I don't even want to, I will start going into it. So I'm just going to keep it short and sweet here. They are very, very difficult to overcome because we tend to drain ourselves, fixating on the emotions of our trials and tribulation. You know, it, it, we have fear, we have anger, we have um, bitterness, we have all kinds of things that really just, you know, twist our gut in a knot and make us a grumpy person, you know? And like I said, I've had my fair share of them and some last longer than others. And I'm sure you can relate, but Christ is saying, Hey, if you haven't experienced any trials or tribulations, <clears throat> excuse me, you will definitely experience them and they're not fun. And Jesus has definitely experienced them. I mean, if anyone's going to talk about experiencing tribulations and trials, that man himself, who is also fully God had some tribulations, you know, can you imagine being hunted down to be beaten, spit on and crucified? I, oh my goodness gracious, you guys, I can't even, I can't even begin to imagine the fear I would have, the chronic shaking in my boots I would be having or doing, but Jesus knows exactly how we feel. He has every emotion that we have, or he had every emotion that we have while he was here on earth because he was fully man, like I said, and he's also fully God. So having said that he's fully God, he was able to overcome the world. And because he overcame the world, he wants us to let us know that, hey, don't worry about these hard times. You're going to have them, sure. But guess what? Your hard times are going to last this long because that's about how long your overall lifespan is. It's like a blink of an eye. Like I said, I'm, I'm having my 14th, 29th, or my, tw yeah, my 29th birthday 14 times already. Where's the time going? But you know what? That goes to show just how fast we can get over these periods of our difficulties. And that's one day closer that we wake up that we're going to be with Jesus as so much as we believe in him. So again, don't fixate yourselves on the emotion and drain yourselves on the emotion of your trials and tribulations or difficult times. They will be there. But as long as you cling to Jesus, he will take those away. He will fight for you. He will readjust your focus and help you focus on him and the peace that he brings you which is what we need, guys, because this hard, this world is hard. All right? My goodness gracious. Now let's go have some peaceful times and get that to that painting. 
I'm beginning my project with my 1 inch tip flat brush using the color Perusian Blue to fill in the night sky. Notice I'm just doing back and forth brush strokes and I'm not trying to look for clean edges either. Also this section should be roughly 1 fourth of your canvas. Next, I'm still using the same brush, but after it's been thoroughly rinsed, I'm now using Cadmium Red Deep Hue for the flag stripes, still doing back and forth brush strokes. I'm trying to keep my stripes about the width of my brush, and again, I'm not looking for edges that look like I applied painter's tape for that ultimate clean edges look. Rather, I'm going for something that looks sort of rough around the edges instead, so to speak. You'll also notice that I slightly bring the red over into the blue some to keep that same rough around the edges look consistent. I used the blow dryer first to ensure the blue was completely dried first before I added the red because I didn't want to make purple if the two colors blended while still wet. If you make a line way too fat or too thin or uneven or whatever, just blow dry it and add the appropriate color to cover it up to correct it. After all, it's just paint. Anything is fixable. Again, I thoroughly rinsed my brush and used the blow dryer once more to make sure my red was dry so when I add my titanium white, I don't make pink. You'll see that I was able to adjust my lines a little bit towards the bottom. For the night stars, I'm using a brush to tap my large fan brush that's dipped into some metallic white instead of a flat or basic titanium white that will be great to give off a reflection when the light hits it depending on the angle. Here you'll see I went ahead and painted over anything that splattered out of its zone and took away a few stars while I was at it so they didn't look too clustered. Next I'm using my medium round brush with the color Mars Black to outline the ground. Notice I keep my line uneven to keep some of the red in the bottom stripe still exposed and that I don't really make the ground level much higher than the first stripe. Notice I also use the same brush and color to paint in the edge of a tree trunk that starts to branch out about the fourth stripe down. To keep your branches looking more realistic, gently release any pressure off the brush towards the end of the branch to make them thinner. So you're basically applying pressure at the base of the branch then gently lifting towards the end to make different branch widths. The best part about making trees is that there's really no wrong way to make a branch or even a wrong placement. They're all over the place, so just let your imagination take over and have fun, of course, as you should be already. Now I switch to my number 6 round blender brush, just blotting in the leaves all around the branches. Still using Mars Black, I switch brushes again to my half inch tip comb brush to paint in a few wisps of grass along the ground.
And lastly, I thought it would add a nice finishing touch going back to the metallic white to add in a shooting star. Any fine detail brush will do just fine. Look at that guys, a nice twofer so to speak. You have the focal point which is our awesome flag and of course some simple yet beautiful landscaping features. Don't mind me now, I'm about to briefly get on my soapbox here. I don't know about you but just looking at our flag makes me feel blessed regardless of all of our trials and tribulations within our country. Every country, business, home, relationship, personal life, even churches face them. No one gets a pass on not experiencing difficult times. And what a reminder it is to thank our men and women who selflessly signed the dotted line to serve our country and their families to make it is what it is. We are free to have opinions. And even though sometimes opinions may feel offensive to someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person who was offended is always right. And just remember, you can't please everyone on earth. It simply is not possible. And that shouldn't be our goal anyways, because we were not put on earth to please other humans. Rather, we are put on this earth to please God because he's the only one who matters anyway. Moreover, we have the freedom to worship God and share his word, which is life changing. Can you believe in some countries if you publicly worship God or even claim that you're a follower and believer in him, that you will be persecuted even to the point of death? It is truly awful. And sadly, instead, we tend to fix it on issues within our own border and claim them as the world's worst problems without even having any firsthand experience living in the countries we claim to be so much better than ours, not realizing how much better off we really are that the roses really do smell better over here. That's also why so many countries look to us for help in so many areas. There's a reason people flock to our country and all the more proof why people aren't packing their bags and bringing their families to go live in less fortunate countries. Because in addition to the Bible giving them hope, so does our flag. So let's count our blessings, not our problems. You can't escape them anyway, no matter where you go. So it's up to us to pray that they are peacefully solved the way Jesus wants it to be solved. Anyway, always remember that no matter how nasty or unfair life may feel, that's just life. It's not always going to be a bowl of cherries. And it's not up to us humans to make everything perfect because we will never be perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. We are humans with limited understanding and capabilities. But if we give Jesus our heart, he will give us the peace we need so that we will be more accepting of our difficult times, which will make our life less stressful. And in this case, it's less is more that really counts. Less stress, more love and peace. And as long as we are believers in Christ, the enemy will work tirelessly to distract us and keep us angry and bitter towards each other. And at all the things in life that we have no control over, or at least utterly failing at where we do have control. Again, because we are not perfect. And that guilt trip of not being perfect or even accepting of our hard times also comes from our enemy, Satan. So again, let's thank Jesus for our salvation and our flag, because not in just this nation, all nations under God. We are all privileged to get to know him and to be called a child of God. So that concludes this lesson. And thank you so much for hearing my two cents. Seriously, I'm not one to talk about politics, but given this painting represents a very special land, especially going through some difficult times right now, I just felt pushed to help remind anyone that we're all in this together to get through our trials and tribulations under the care and protection of our savior. So if you liked the tutorial, please be sure to not only share it, but to also hit like and to subscribe for more videos. Don't forget about that notification button either, or you will be left in the dark when I post another one. Liking and subscribing tells YouTube that you want more, and I want to give you more, so help me make that happen. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity, and always paint from the soul.